Hi all, let's look at another fascinating encounter between Leela Chess 11089 and Stockfish as of 22nd of August 2018, that version. Uh, so this is in the Chesscom Computer Championship Rapid Rumble, 15 minutes with a 5 second increment. Stage 2, we see the Shigorin being uh, the opening, the first 4 ply Shigorin. So Leela playing white plays C takes D5 here, we have Queen takes, E3. And now the energetic e5 ready to pin this knight after knight c3 with bishop b4. Leela encourages Stockfish to give up the bishop pair. Uh, another move here is bishop d2 and similar kind of thing. But this bishop might be a bit more awkward on d2 for a moment. But in theory this should should be okay for white. A small edge here, for example like this. But uh, Leela forces the issue straight away. Uh, so bishop takes c3, b takes knight f6, c4, queen d6, d5. The knight's pushed back to b8 here. On knight e7, it may be the case that a4 is, is useful here for bishop a3. For example, c6, there's knight f3. If c takes, which stops black being able to play c5 now, bishop a3, c takes here. This, this is a nice position for white. White's got a nice advantage there. You can see that dark square bishop is quite uh, a menace, actually. So knight b8. So Lila has picked up a trump card, an imbalance, a favorable imbalance potentially, from the opening here. Knight e2, <clears throat> knight a6. But black does seem to have a formidable blockade here on c5. Uh, knight c3, so knight going to c3, black castles, bishop e2, knight c5, a4, c6. White castles, bishop d7. Now bishop a3 seems like an annoying pin. Rook f c8, e4, c takes, e takes, bishop f5, rook e1, knight f d7. Now it looks as though black's got a perfect blockade here on the c5 square, uh, which Leela cannot poss possibly undermine. Well, it looks very unlikely at the moment. This move a5 is very interesting actually. It uh, seems to encourage potentially this pawn being swapped off via b6 and b takes pretty soon in the game. It's very interesting indeed. Uh, I'm not sure black would really be that interested in playing a5, so that's not really the main, pardon me, the main intention uh, of this move, I believe, because the b5 hole that would be massive. So a5, very interesting move with. In interesting implications. Instead of that move, I was just checking around this position. Say h3, e4 is always nice because of queen d4. Black doesn't want to do that. Um, but yeah, maybe there's other non-committal moves here. Uh, but as, as another try, say queen d3, knight b3, by the way, doesn't quite work because the bishop's attacking the queen, the queen just drops back. We can end up with the same position. Uh, let's try independently bishop f3, queen g6, d6. Uh, there's, there's some impact here with bishop h5 uh, for knight d5 to win f7. This leaves in this scenario e5 a bit vulnerable. An isolated pawn white should have a small edge there. Uh, so yeah, there's interesting alternatives, but a5 is pretty curious. Queen g6. Now bishop h5 here. Queen f6. Rook e3 is played now, which holds that d3 square for sure. And maybe uh, the rook's flexible now across that third rank. b6, h3. And yeah, I mean, black is going for that a5 pawn. a takes would be, I believe, favorable for, for black to you know hit c4. That knight would be activated. It could be quite nasty. So it's just left by the other for black to take this. It becomes basically a positional pawn sack. And this is intuitively a bit less stable. Than before this c5 blockade but how to actually prove this d6 is played here king h8 queen e2 uh rook a b8 rook d1 yeah the queen has doesn't really want to leave d6 because of f7 so now that pawn's protected and we have h6 bishop g4 here uh again knight d5 might, might actually give white a small edge here uh, but uh, this wasn't chosen in fact so bishop g4 now if bishop 
uh, bishop took if bishop g6 there is a bit of a disaster here tactically after bishop takes uh yeah you know with c8 dropping so uh we have actually after bishop g4 bishop takes g4 h6 so Le hg so Lila gets double pawns but this rook and g5 is also interesting in some scenarios now and we have knight e6 it's actually got an impact this position for the blockade uh, so knight e6 you might think is curious uh, but I'll give you some examples here a4 there's bishop takes c5 here and if rook takes c5 then there's the fork unfortunate fork so white will be much better and if we look at it again uh, with a4 just just have interest bishop takes c5 and forget about the fault knight takes then actually in this position there's g5 funny enough because uh, on queen takes there's d7 and now rook takes e5 is strong hitting the queen and knight so another kind of double attack but actually rook e8 check is the is the bigger point this scenario where white's pawns just win this is absolutely winning connected past pawns absolutely winning so yeah there's some very very interesting variations which crop up here uh, which might help explain why knight e6 uh, was played so it seems as though the once formidable blockade on c5 is loosening yet again another bit of loosening of that blockade uh, so curious we have and also now there's knight d5 so the the queen's nowhere near to take that pawn pawns actually protected quite well now Queen h4 we have rook c1 now knight d4 again loosening the blockade on knight on the other knight going to c5 then rook takes e5 is brilliant for white uh, on king h7 knight e7 is dangerous for example like this with c5 yeah the, the rooks just chased away from blockading against c5 and the pawns are just massive here after queen d1 yeah, it's like the blockade's been completely uh, uh, zeroed. So knight d4, queen d1 with prospects of c5 now. So what was once an iron lock on the c5 square seemingly evaporated over the last few moves. Knight f6, knight takes, queen takes, and yes, c5. This is getting dangerous now. King g8, rook e c3 with the big threat of c6 now because the bishop protects this pawn. Black has to blockade again, literally, with rook c6. Yeah, this is just too strong to allow c6. This position is just crushing. Absolutely crushing. Uh, so we have rook c6. So Stockfish is blockading for its dear life. Rook h3. a6. We have queen d3. Rook cc8, leaving the a6 pawn. This is very, very curious here. And actually, it's not taken immediately. Uh, rook e1 was played if if that pawn's taken immediately uh with queen takes a6 it seems queen e6 hitting g4 is a bit of a pain with that knight on d4 there's no natural place to come back so say this then g6 this position it does seem quite nice for white though white still has those dangerous pawns uh but it, it was delayed actually of rook e1 taking on a6 knight c6 I get, if black tries to defend this pawn then white builds on e5 for example like this and then builds on e5 and then builds on e5 again four things can attack e5 free defending e5 falls white's got a big advantage uh on king h8 instead uh actually queen e4 might be uh best here uh for example like this just pushing through with c6 Big advantage so yeah knight c6 uh we have queen takes a6 so it's equal on pawns and i was optimistic when looking at the live stream because i thought these two connected pawns are quite dangerous and especially after this queen takes e5 but yeah this this move does break break the network of pawns knight b4 and actually even though the engines say an advantage both of them uh i'm not sure i believe it might be in practice very very difficult to crack what I would call the virtual fortress which to me seems to be the bigger Achilles Hill of the this entire tournament a virtual fortress scenario is one where the evaluation is positive say you've got plus two plus three 
but it just doesn't increase it doesn't ever increase so that's what I call a virtual fortress now when the connected pass pawns are eliminated here with knight b4 even though this might be favorable technically for white is it actually an exploitable advantage so we have queen takes and the connected pass pawns go now with rook takes c5 because if queen takes here then queen takes here and yes the pass pawns have gone it's a bit sad but so Lila chooses a different way with queen takes okay rook takes so at the moment uh, is a pawn up and now rook h5 is nifty skewering it seems very usefully but look now rook takes it's actually a very very difficult not to crack this position if it is at all possible I'm starting to wonder is this actually a winning position rook e5 knight b6 rook e4 uh, on rook takes a5 here then there's knight c4 and then for example this position uh, should it should actually be if it's actually this position it's it's technically good for white but I'm not sure it's winning I I, I believe you know you, you'd have yeah so we have king f7 f4 knight d5 uh, here rook e5 knight b6 the knight can't take here because of a check of course uh, so knight b6 rook takes so two pawns up but is it actually winning knight c4 check yeah bishop b4 I mean this is a double pawn these are double pawns here as well uh, rook b7 was played it might be too dangerous to take on d6 here after check this is a very unfortunate pin uh, which after rook takes yeah here is is even actually that's that's not the way to play it uh so there's another there's another way of playing it here uh check the the better way of playing it is not to cash out there um but on move 54 to play rook d2 this position it seems as though white can win this with especially with move this is just one example with move like this I'm not sure black is even forced to play g5 but this can lead to a position where white's winning by force it seems for sure uh, so we have actually uh, rook b7 not taking on d6 which is much stronger uh, bishop c5 rook b5 rook h5 king d7 bishop d4 hitting g7 and wanting to exchange of rooks g5 uh, yeah taking here is a big advantage to white the bishop is well nourished here with the dark square pawns so this would be nice yeah this 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 looks as though there's no fortress there at all no, no virtual fortress so g5 rook takes rook b5 bishop f2 g takes rook f6 and it looks as though in fact even though technically white's better i'm i'm not sure this is a draw i'm, I'm anything more than draw pardon me I think it's a virtual fortress uh, it's it's very very difficult to avoid a virtual fortress because uh, there's blockade opportunities on the light squares the bishop is really yeah any any light square blockade the bishop is not going to cope with it just can't see or act on the light squares basically uh, so a virtual fortress possibility is on the cards here already uh, we have bishop h4 rook e5 King h3, rook e6, g5, knight f7, and here a lot of engines. If you put Stockfish or Houdini to analyze the position, they'll come up with Lena's move. Uh, you have to integrate them with table bases, and the table bases will identify the kind of virtual fortress symptom that this is actually just zero off the rook f6. Uh, so clearly, another route to try and win this has to be used uh, and it's probably maybe, maybe there's a technical win here yeah. uh, it needs needs some work to analyze this position as a separate video if, if this is actually winning it's, it's a separate video but what was played is actually a total virtual uh, fortress 
the bishop, as I say, it's it's Achilles' hill. The bishop's Achilles' hill, major one, in fact, is that it can't help on light squares, and that's kind of demonstrated here after rook takes. And Leela really doesn't understand that. Uh, any engine can can achieve that understanding and effect by table-based integration, which will spell that out as a draw. It's just to draw this position now on a table base because uh, the the king just goes to f7 and then knight g6. How are any of these two pawns ever progressing after that? How is the light square blockade lifted? It's not basically. Uh, so, but the game continued like this. So that blockade set up. So it looks as though g4, g, g5, g6. But black's in time here for anything like that uh, with knight e6 to f8 basically. Yeah, if we try g4, g5, g6, we'll just go here and then bang, virtual fortress. Thanks very much. No progress ever. From that position uh so leela tries yeah this uh, this is the game continuation bishop g3 but yeah it's just a virtual fortress and the rest of the game is very tedious for everyone involved <laughs> spectators everybody i'll just fast forward the rest of the game uh yeah so i'm i'm wondering it's because of this game looking at this video i posted to the um the Leela forum is about this virtual fortress, you know, symptom. I mean, you can say also perpetual checks is another instance, either perpetual blockade or perpetual check is another instance of where an evaluation is never going up. And I remember actually uh, doing chess-based shows on, on Tuesday that uh, sometimes, yeah, here G6 in desperation was was just given up, probably to avoid a 50-move draw rule. So Leela gives up the pawn. Still another virtual fortress. And in fact, wanting to give away the knight, knight isn't taken. So the game carries on even more. Yeah. But as I say, uh, when I'm doing the chess-based live show, sometimes it was difficult to break fortresses in, in Kasparov games. And I noticed an early version of Stockfish had a thing called null move pruning. And Houdini didn't seem to have null move pruning. And sometimes those positions could be solved by Houdini and couldn't at, by Stockfish at the time. Uh, but that's that's a slightly different issue again. Uh, the issue of perpetual check or perpetual fortress is is a major one to conquer uh, because it's going to lead to Leela fluffing basically a lot of positions where it thinks it's winning, but it's actually just the virtual fortress. So I'm not really sure how that's solved. If it has been solved in other neural network self-learning exercises of, of games, winning games. But it's basically a very stubborn defense where... The impression is given that one is winning, but even with another 50 moves, the evaluation is not going to change from, say, plus three. Uh, and that sometimes shocks spectators when they see plus three and the game ends up in draw, and they're wondering, what is this all about? But yeah, virtual fortress is, is a term I would use for it. Uh, so that's interesting, maybe, uh, to think about how that's actually solved in this context of self-learning neural networks. Uh, okay, I hope you got something from this game. Uh, a solid solid game with white but maybe it wasn't winning i'm not entirely i can't categorically say if this was definitely winning at any point uh, myself but maybe you'd like to express your opinion if you think there's a concrete win somewhere please post to the comments uh, your concrete win for white if you think because uh, both engines during the stream thought it was a you know big almost like plus three i think at one stage but i'm not sure it was that exploitable Okay, comments, questions, like, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.